Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Juana. Today I'm going to be working with embroidery. I'm going to be working on an applique design and I'm going to be embroidering a t-shirt. I'm going to be explaining everything uh, with detail in the introduction of the video. And I'm going to be using my Ricoma EM1010. It's a 10 needle embroidery machine. These are the items that I'm going to be utilizing and I'm going to go through them with detail later on. So guys, I can't wait to start. So let's go at it. I am using Embrilliance Essential for this one, and um, this is the design that I created. I am celebrating my 20th anniversary of being a registered nurse. I decided to embroider the RN, which means registered nurse. So this is how it should look in the background. Um, a dark colored t-shirt, um, navy blue. I think that the t-shirt is a little bit darker than this. Let's go back to the original. One, I'm gonna go back here, go back to display settings and reset the default. Apply and okay. This is a very simple design. All I did was, um, you know, add the RN on top of it and write this down here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run the simulator so you know how it's gonna go. The first thing it's gonna do is gonna give me the placement stitch, okay? And then I'm going to place the fabric and it's gonna stitch down the fabric, I'm gonna cut around it, and it's gonna embroider the satin stitch. Once it's done doing the satin stitch, what it's going to do is that it's going to, uh, I'm gonna fast forward so you don't have to go through the whole thing. Once it does a satin stitch, it's gonna go back to the white color thread and it's going to embroider the RN, the date, okay? Um, yeah, so guys, I'm gonna go to the craft table. I'm going to hoop this shirt. I'm gonna be using a eight by 13 Mighty Hoop and the Hoop Master. So guys, see you over there. So these are the things that I'm going to be using. I'm gonna be using cutaway stabilizer. Okay, um, my hoop master, my eight by 13 mighty hoop. We're gonna be hooping the shirt using the hoop master. Um, this is the printed design that I always print when I'm doing this kind of work. And I'm gonna be using right here, the heat and bond light. And I'm gonna be using this because I'm gonna iron a piece of this to one of the fabric that I'm gonna be using in the back. I'm gonna explain that later on for those who are new to applique. I'm gonna be using my scissors right here. I'm gonna be using my mini press. This is a new mini press that I bought about three to four months ago. And I have this listed down on my description box. Uh, it's a link to the Amazon store where I got it. It's very, very convenient. It's uh, maybe double the size of the um, picket one. So it works perfect for big applique designs. And then of course, these are the shirts. Um, on the intro, I explained to you um, that I was gonna be using a navy blue t-shirt. And this was the fabric that I had in mind to use. But then I noticed that when I placed it here against the navy blue, it's kind of too dark. This is the green color that I was planning to use to frame it, um, the satin stitch around it. Um, so I decided to maybe uh, use this shirt, which is a lighter blue, and then use this fabric and then with the satin stitch around it in this um, corn silk. I think it's called either corn silk yellow. It's a light yellow. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. Um, I thought also to switch this and use this fabric here and use the satin stitch on a yellow color. So guys, what do you think? I am, I am, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna surprise you with my decisions because I'm not sure at this point. I'm about to store the whole thing and I don't know what to do. Um, this looks pretty good because it has the flower fabric. It has speckles on the um, flower in the middle, the same kind of color. So I thought that, you know, this will look pretty good. And so I don't know. What do you think, guys? I 
think this is a great option. Blue and light blue. I will decide later. Uh, I'm going to get the machine ready with everything. So all I have to do is turn on the machine and start prepping. And the first thing that I'm going to do is cut a piece of this on the size of the fabric that I decided to use, which again, I have not decided yet. And yeah, so guys, let's get started, all right? Okay, guys, so let's hook this baby. I'm gonna be using my hook master to hook my shirt. Um, again, this is the eight by 13 Mighty Hook. First thing, we're gonna put the part of the hook in here. Again, this is called a weight stabilizer. If you wear it, don't tear it. And um, this is the shirt. This is a gilded shirt. It's a size large. And yes, I went for the navy blue. I'll surprise you on the third option that I thought of. And I think it's going to look pretty nice. You will see once we get to the embroidery machine. Okay. If you want to know more about the Mighty Hoop, um, and the Mighty Hoop uh, fixtures, I have videos on my um, video library that you can go back and check how each one of them work. And um, yeah, they are a great thing to have. I love them. It makes everything so easy. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hoop it. It looks like it's straight to me. This is not too low. Get it a little bit here. Yeah, the, these are the things that you use to decide where to put it, depending on the size of the shirt. You will um, see that on my video that I have about the Mighty Hope pictures, how to do it based on the size of the shirt. Okay. see how this looks. If it doesn't, then I have to rearrange everything. Okay, so let's go. This looks pretty good to me. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. Let me get some tape. I'll be right back. If you want to get some Mighty Hoops, I have a link down below on the description box where you can um, get a code so that you can get free shipping on your Mighty Hoops. The code, I'm gonna put it down on the video, you're gonna see it, and also you can go to my link down below and you can use it to buy your Mighty Hoops and then you will get free shipping, all right? And that is a great deal because you're gonna save a lot of money on the shipping, all right? Okay, this looks good and straight to me. I'm using the lines to make sure that I have good position and it looks good. And I think this is too low, so I might have to do it all over again. Yeah. So let's do this all over again. I don't like, this looks to me that it's too low to me, the design. Okay, I'm gonna position the design where I want it, no more than four fingers down, that might help me. So yeah. So I had it correct originally, and I messed it up. <laughs> I had it right the first time. So this is about here. This is the frame about here. So I was fine to correct. Right, the first time I did it. Okay, so let's go now. Now I'm gonna straighten the design to make sure that it's in place and straighten. Looks about right. You don't have to use the pin out. I do it because it helps me visualize what what I want to do. You know, so this is a visual thing. You, you don't, you know, you can position the 
the um, shirt without my embroidery um, print out and the machine will center it because you have a center here but me I like the visual and the way it's gonna look so that's why I print out the design right now it's looking good so the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the machine I'm going to prep the fabric and I'm gonna show you how I do it okay so guys let's go at it this is the way it looks Okay, guys, so the press is ready to roll. I am running this about, I mean, it's, this is not have like a set time. I would usually put it around 350, 340 for about 30 seconds. This is the heat and bone light. I had two pieces um, already cut up, um, and I'm going to use them for this. You know, and that way I don't waste more heat and bone. So let me cut this a little bit more. Smaller piece. I'm gonna trim it a little bit. And when you are using this, you're gonna put the paper part facing you and you're gonna feel roughness on the glue part. So this is gonna go facing the um, fabric, okay? And you're gonna iron it, moving it around. It doesn't take too long to adhere. Then you're gonna let it cool. And so when you're ready to place it on the embroidery, um, then you're gonna peel it up. Okay, that's why I don't want to be too close because I don't want any paper be left on the design, all right? So I'm gonna make it as close as I can. I need to peel the paper off. Okay. It should be good right here. I try to cut the heat and bun a little bit smaller than the size of the fabric because I don't want any glue on my mat. And also when you cut your fabric, for those who are new to applique, Cut the fabric a little bit larger than the design, all right? Because you're gonna trim it around anyway. So you want the fabric to be a little bit wider or bigger, around all the way around. Okay. See, this way I have some leftover. I'm not gonna have any glue on the mat. And I will do the same thing with this piece. This piece is fine. I don't have to trim it. This is fine. This is pretty good. Okay. Make sure that you have a nice view. Sometimes I start talking and I forget. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna start doing this part. You just go around, keep it there. And I'm gonna do this part. This is very handy. This is like in between the size of um, my Cricut 9x6, I think. Um, it's in between the 9x6 and the small Cricut press. Um, I also have the 9, the 12x9, the bigger one. That one is also very handy, but this one is for these small jobs that you need a bigger one than the Cricut. This is perfect. I've seen people working with rhinestones using this, and they they, they do well. So, because you know you don't need to have a big press to press rhinestones. You can use any any size heat press to work with rhinestones. So, right. So I'm gonna move this a little bit. Please. It doesn't have to be exact gonna get glue to the fabric anyway. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this part. Forgot to start it. <laughs> okay. 
almost there. So I'm gonna turn it off because I don't need it anymore. Let it cool a little bit and then I'm gonna pull the packing off. And then we're gonna move to the embroidery. All right, let me unplug this. I always unplug my appliances when I'm done. I never, never, never leave it unplugged. And then I'm gonna move the camera to the embroidery machine and I'm gonna wait for this to cool down, okay? So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, so we are here. I already traced it, but I'm gonna trace it one more time so that you can see how I trace it for those who have never um, seen this before. I'm gonna go ahead and press trace, which is this icon here at the bottom that is like a square beside the escape icon. And even though I know the design is uh, a good size, you always trace. It don't matter because sometimes things happen, okay? So you always trace, trace, trace. So I trace it once and this is my second time. This is good to go. I don't need this anymore. So the first stitch that is gonna happen is the placement stitch, okay? And I forgot to mention for this machine, I um, placed it on automatic manual AM, meaning that it's gonna stop at every change of color to give me a chance to place the fabric and do all that stuff, okay? I'm using a royal blue color, so you might not see it, but yeah, it's doing it. So this is the fabric. It's already cool, so I'm just peeling it. Okay, let's see. And it's very shiny. You can tell it's right there, okay? So it's making the placement stitch for each one of the letters. Let me check the camera. Let me put it lower so you can see it better than me. Maybe a little bit closer. Let me put it closer, okay? So the machine stop, and I'm gonna place the fabric and make sure that the fabric is gonna cover all areas. That's why you have to cut the fabric a little bit bigger than what the design is, okay? All right? So I usually use this to hold the fabric in place. Um, I have plenty of fabric, so I know that if shit is not gonna bother, but if your fabric is smaller, you just hold it with something. Don't put your hand in there, okay? All right, don't do that, that's very dangerous. So I'm gonna go ahead and play start again, and it's gonna do the tack down stitch. Now that it did the first one, I know the fabric is not gonna shift, so I'm not gonna have to worry about it.
It's looking pretty nice. Okay, so the machine stopped because now I have to trim the fabric around and um, you can either do it in the right here uh, with the Ricoma you can place the tray out I'm gonna show you how to do this um, I usually like to bring my hook out but if you don't want to you can also have the option I'm gonna move the camera around to show you what I mean if you see this icon right here you press that icon and the hoop is gonna come out Okay, and it allows you to trim right here. Let me show you. You see how it came out? You can trim from here also. I'm gonna push the icon again and you're gonna see it go back. One thing that you have to remember when you're done with this, if you're gonna use this um, option, you have to remember to return the hoop back because if you don't do it, look at what is right here. It's gonna hit the frame. So make sure you're gonna go back, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move the camera, I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna be trimming on the table. Okay, so all the steps that I have explained to you um, until now, you can apply it to your single needle embroidery machine. The only difference is of course, you're gonna have a different hoop and you're gonna only have one needle, but everything else you can apply to your single needle embroidery machine as well, all right? Everything. So I have a couple of scissors that I use to do this. I either can use these ones right here, they are, they are friskers and they are, have a curve um, tip that will help you trim around. And then this one right here is a smaller one. That I usually use it for trimming, but if you have difficult areas like I'm going to have right here on the R, you can use this to trim around and you have to be careful that you're not going to um, do a hole on the fabric when it comes to these areas in here. Okay, so I'm going to start trimming. I'm gonna take this to a fast mode. I'm gonna run the video faster. So we are here, everything is nice and um, trimmed, and um, I decided to keep the fabric that I had in mind originally, and you're going to see which thread color 
um, I decide to use. So start guessing. We're going to start. Now what we're going to have left is the satin stitch of the color that you're going to uh, see which one I chose. And then after that, I, it's going to continue to the uh, white color thread, which is going to embroider the rest of the design. So let's get started. Yes, guys, I decided to use the yellow color thread and that way it will brighten up the color of the fabric and it's going to give it a nice ribs um, look to the shirt as opposed to the green color, which I think it would have kept the design look a little bit dark. So, yeah, and it's looking real nice. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, um, run this video faster. I see you when it's done, all right?
okay guys so this is done and um it's looking amazing let me pull you back a little bit so that i can remove the poop show you a quick look so what i'm going to do right now is that i'm going to be removing the stabilizer from the back and cleaning everything up and i'll bring you back um to press the design because remember we put the heat and burn light we had to press it so that the fabric adhere to the shirt i'm going to move the camera around all right <music> This oil is uh, water um, washable, so it doesn't leave a stain or anything like that. And there's a little bit of a food burn, but again, you put some water, just pick it with water and it goes away. I'm waiting for the um, press to get up to temperature, and I'm going to just press it for a little bit in here so that the fabric will stick into the shirt, okay? I love the way it came out. So the yellow thread was a perfect solution to my, uh, you know, question about what color would I place so that the design will pop up um, out of this dark uh, background, maybe background of the fabric. So I really, really, really like it. So this is not gonna be a long press because you don't have to press it for a long time. I don't like to flatten the satin stitch too much. I just need to place some heat so that the fabric will um, stay in place. No? I always forget to turn on the press. And then once I'm done with this, I'm gonna let it pull down. I am back and this is the shirt and it came out amazing. I love the result. I am glad that I switched the color of the satin stitch. If you have any questions about how to do applique using a single needle embroidery machine, you can go ahead and look for my video library. I have lots of video that explains step by step on how to do basic applique on a single needle embroidery machine, as well on how to use the five by 12 hook on the single needle embroidery machine and do applicas over there too, okay? If you're new to my channel and you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel, The Crafty Pro Weekend, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you're gonna get notified of all my future videos. Guys, this is everything for now. Thank you for spending this time with me. Until next time, I will see you soon. Bye, hasta luego.